Good morning, principals and management students. How are you? This is Mr. Argetta coming to you week number two. It is Wednesday, the 13th of January. I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible. Uh, that way you can get started on your week's assignment. So let me start off by a recap of week number one. Uh, well done, by the way. I know this was a quick start. Uh, some people are used to the 16-week semesters, and it gives you kind of a, a little bit of a slower pace where in our class for principles of management and all management classes, we have uh, did what's called an accelerated sort of semester, which we try to condense it to get you guys through the program a little quicker, hopefully graduating more people. That That's the intention of it. So for some of you, so this is a very, very large class. It's 100, about 100 people are in this class. And I want to encourage you to get to know other people. A lot of the um, you know, connections that I have in business today are people who I went to school with. And I want to encourage that in my classes because I think that it's important for you to make those connections and be able to use those resources or people when you get into the into the business world. Um, we have a very large, diverse group in this class. Uh, this class has welders, people in the culinary arts, nurses, uh, um, I mean, just uh, an array of things. You can mention it and it's probably in this classroom. Uh, so I encourage you to go out there in the discussions and connect with as many people as you can. Uh, obviously, you guys know the minimum that I expect, but I would encourage you to go beyond that. Uh, last semester, I had a fairly large class too. It was about 50 to 60 people in that class. And I saw the connections happening in, in the discussion post. So I wanna encourage that as well in this class. It's important for you guys to know that uh, you are all, uh, you know, obviously gonna be professionals in industry and you will be a big part of our communities. And I encourage everyone to make those connections while you have them here. All right, so week number one went well. You guys did what you were supposed to do. Syllabus quiz will be uh, closed out or was closed out yesterday night. I will go in there and enter any drops. So if unfortunately, if you're watching this video and you don't know what I'm talking about, you might want to check it out or email me because you might be dropped from the class if you did not complete your syllabus quiz. All right. That being said, uh, if you, for some reason, weren't able to complete the assignments for last week, I encourage you, don't worry about it. Move on. Let's work on chapter two, or, or week number two. Uh, that way we can stay focused on what's happening uh, as of this week. There'll be times to make that up. I, I wouldn't be too stressed out about it, guys. Just, uh, you know, just move on. Uh, I think that's our best option. I've had students in the past try to do two weeks worth of work, and it's so much work. You end up doing bad on both weeks and it's not worth it. It's better for you to focus on this week, get a good grade for this week, and let's move forward. I promise you that there will be times to make those situations up. All right. All right. So moving on. So this week, we are going to be talking about the macro environment of business. And of course, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, coffee. So Green Mountain Coffee Growers, you probably know them as K-Cup or the Curry Company, but they looked at what was the outside environment and competition that was being driven from outside sources, Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's, all these coffee manufacturers, and they were trying to find their place in the coffee industry. So in business, there's this concept that if someone you know is good at something, let's say I'm a good baker, um, and by the way, if you're in culinary arts and you want to send up some good cookies or something, that's always welcomed. Uh, I'm pretty sure all of us in this class wouldn't mind eating a good cookie. But if I'm a good baker, the concept is that I could probably be successful in business. Well, that doesn't always hold true. There's these outside forces in business or in the environment of business that causes uh, something to fail. For for example, if uh, in Calhoun, where I live, there's a shift in people's uh, dietary practices. And what I mean by that is people want to eat healthier. People want to get healthier. They want to lose weight or they just want to do it to feel better. And I'm a restaurant and I don't pay attention and everything I make is, is greasy and fatty and uh, is not unhealthy, then I'm probably going to eventually end up suffering in my business because the environment outside that I cannot control is going to 
shift their practices and not purchase unhealthy foods. So if I'm a good baker and I I mean I I have I make the best pies ever, but the people around me or the envir- environment I'm in, the external macro environment of business doesn't like pies, then they're not going to buy a pie, no matter how good my pie is. So I I encourage you to understand the outside forces that impact the business environment. Many people think that just because you're good at some area that that's going to equate to a good business idea. That doesn't always work that way. So I think that many people have this um, idea that all you need to succeed in business is to be good at something. Well, We're going to learn that there are forces that impact every business and every environment of business. Uh, As I mentioned earlier, the Green Mountain Company saw their external environment of the coffee industry and decided to shift their strategy to be able to accommodate to what's happening outside of their environment, forces they cannot control. So this week, we're going to look at that. And we're also going to have a discussion over ethical perspectives perspectives. And my question to you is, what is your method of making a decision? What ethical perspective do you hold in making decisions? Um, In one of my ethics classes that I teach, I ask a question the very first day of class and I say, Is it ever okay to say a lie? The question of it being right or correct to lie to someone, to tell someone uh, something that is false, is that ever okay? Now, there are many people uh, that have uh, taken the ethical stance that lying is bad, that lying is wrong. And to some people, that, that is always true. And they call that mindset a deontological mindset. Uh, where you believe that a higher power, uh, a God, if you may, uh, has established rules and laws and has then uh, said it somewhere that it is not good to lie. So then the question is, does that rule ever change? Can you ever lie and it be okay? So it's a tough decision. And I know that some of you struggle with that, but no one ever falls into one specific Uh, ethical perspective. So I want you to understand that you're going to find yourself making decisions based on several different ethical prospects or perspectives. So when you read that, please make sure you kind of find yourself in a place where you are kind of identifying which direction you would go in what scenario and have a discussion on that this week. Um, Other than that, guys, I, I want you to, like I said, enjoy the journey, enjoy the process of being in this class. I hope you're going to learn a lot. There's a lot, a lot in this in this book. So we're going to try to just sort of pick at it and try to capture as much as we can. Other than that, guys, I hope that you're having a wonderful time out there. You're being safe. It is cold today. I went out to get a cup of coffee, as you can tell, and my car was frozen over. So I had to wait till it warmed up and get out there. Um, But anyhow, um, what else can I tell you guys? It's a crazy week. It was a crazy week last week. I encourage you not to focus on the differences that we have, but on the similarities, um, you know, I, I try to encourage you to continue to focus on what's important. And what's important is you and your family, is you graduating, and what's important is for us to take care of one another, uh, our neighbors, despite what they believe and who they are. Uh, I encourage you to uh, respect one another out there. Uh, let's try to get past this crazy times in our society, and our world. And uh, I, I wish you the very best this week. Uh, if you need me, I will make myself available. I'm also logging in to collaborate about once or twice a week. I sit there for about an hour on a live session for anyone that needs help, anyone that wants to maybe drop by and ask a question or have any concerns. uh, I make myself available to you guys. It is a pleasure to come to you via a video. I would love for you to send me videos because I I don't know who you are. There's a 100 people in this class and I get to see black and white letters every week about you. But Uh, Guys, have a wonderful time this week. Stay safe. Be careful out there. Do your work. And I will see you soon. Take care. Bye.